Welcome back, guys. Welcome back to the Culture Shocks podcast, episode three. We're just blown away by how many people are actually watching this podcast. I did not think that we would have over 400 people already watching. Yeah. So thanks to you guys. I'm blown really. away. Thank you guys so much for that. Yeah. It's, I mean, we're literally here just talking, <laughs> hanging <laughs> out, like an excuse, as we said before, yeah. an excuse to hang out every Monday. And uh, it's great. I look forward to Monday nights just hanging out and uh, having a drink or two. We had yeah. some questions actually. What we were drinking last time, some people thought it was orange juice or something. It was yeah. actually eggnog. Eggnog, yeah. Because I never had eggnog. Never tried really? it. No. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's why we drank it. Because he was like, yeah. dude, I have some eggnog. Would you like some? And I'm yeah. like, what is eggnog? It's basically? normally something you drink for like Christmas time. And I was like, Christmas is over and I still have eggnog at home. <laughs> but actually, they don't have like eggnog in the grocery stores here. No. So I had to go to System Belogit and I, I asked them, I was like, do you guys have eggnog? And he's like, this yeah. is actually the closest that we have to eggnog. It was like a egg liqueur, basically, yeah. from the Netherlands, actually. So it wasn't like the eggnog that we would drink in America, because usually you can drink eggnog without alcohol. Yeah. But the only, only thing that I've heard about like eggnog growing up was like, you know, American funny stories saying like, yeah, grandpa was just drinking a lot of eggnog and <laughs> yeah. getting drunk and all that. And it was really good. It was a good drink. Yeah, it was tasty. Yeah. You can actually like mix like whiskey in with the eggnog, so you can do like bourbon. Which we did. <laughs> yeah, we did a little bit, just to try it. But yeah. I mean, I it think was... the eggnog that we were drinking, the, the liqueur was like 15%, so we only had like one glass, basically. Yeah. But if you add the whiskey, then you're like adding, you're adding <laughs> then some Then you're own, dude. Points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're up to 20. So someone, yeah. yeah. So, so that that uh, basically uh, led us into, to if for this week, think, like people think about what we actually drink when yeah. we do the podcast because it varies. Yeah. And uh, we're thinking it'd be fun to, to mix in some... Um, some beer. Yeah. Because we like beer. Well, we were thinking today's topic, we were thinking, well, why not we talk about uh, some Swedish booze and American booze and some thinking, of the things yeah. that uh, are different between alcohol cultures in the two countries. Pretty good, yeah. yeah. And we did bring some beers on the show. Yeah. And uh, I'm actually uh, going to open the first one, I think. Sure. Uh, which is a Swedish one. I'm showing it to the camera now, all you yeah. podcast listeners. And the brewery is called Gotlands Bryggeri, which is yeah. uh, very, very Swedish. It's one of my favorite uh, breweries, actually. Gotland, for those of you that don't know, it's a little island off the off the east coast yeah. of Sweden. Really good. I know some people from there. But this brewery, the Gotlands Bryggeri, they have a really good uh, one. It's called Visby Pils, yeah. like a pilsner from the like capital of Gotland, yeah. uh, if you can call it that. Yeah, Visby, yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah. Wait for it. I say capital in quotation marks because it's only like, what, a couple thousand people that live there probably. Yeah. Well, actually, in the summer in Gotland, there's like, I think like 40, 50,000 people. Yeah. But in the winter, it's like Thank way you. less. So we're drinking, this is uh, an island bulldog, Napa, which is uh, New England. Indian Pale I've never heard Napa before. That's a thing, bro. See, in America, we have IPA, India Pale Ale, which is pretty common where I'm from in the Portland area. Here in Sweden, they... Call them IPAs. I had never heard yeah. IPA. Yeah, when I went to, yeah, I actually said that first time I went to, to a bar in, in the States. I was like, do you have any IPAs? And they were like, what? <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, IPAs, man. Like, you know, beer, like dark beer. You guys abbreviate everything. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Somebody said heave. And I was like, what's heave? H like HIV. I was like, uh, you call it heave here? <laughs> you have it too? No, no. <laughs> no, uh, but, but uh, then, then it was like IPA. If yeah. I say I paid, they know exactly what it's talking about. Exactly. You got to so, spell it out for Cheerios, us bro. Mm. Cheers. That is really good beer. Actually, that's really good. This is something that I find uh, very often uh, when I compare Swedish and American beers. Is that Swedish beers is often uh, darker, a bit stronger, and more tasty. Mm. Like the beer culture is a bit more spread out. Yeah. Um, and I mean... <laughs> partying in, in, in the US when, when I was smaller or younger was basically um, just like Budweiser's, Bud Light and just anything you get yeah. you, you can get your hands the on. The beers that America is known for yeah, yeah. is sort of like watered down. It, it's not really like, we're not really known for our craft beers. Yeah. But when you actually go to America, a lot of these like small micro breweries are sort of catching So up. good. Yeah. When you find them, they're really yeah. good. Yeah. But I actually try to find Budweiser. Uh, in uh, at Sustainable here, which we'll get to later, what that is. Um, and I was trying to, f to find Budweiser and I asked them, like, uh, so 
uh, do you guys have Budweiser's? And they were like, oh, you mean water? Yeah, you can go to the, <laughs> Did they say that? Go to the grocery store, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was like, this guy's funny. Yeah. <laughs> we should bring him on the podcast. Yeah, uh, cool. And it was just hilarious. Uh, he was joking, obviously. Um, uh, but I couldn't agree more because... <laughs> I mean, I, we, we had, I went to like a graduation party and they had a, a keg, like a huge barrel of beer, which is a thing in America. Yeah. It's not here. And it was just like, they, they're like, yeah, it's Coors Light. And I'm like, oh, really? And yeah, it was like, like the fancy stuff? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah right? Fancy stuff? <laughs> and it was like, it was like foam and just like really yeah. disgusting, kind of warm beer. Yeah. It's like, this is terrible. I think in like the colder areas of America or like, Portland, for example, Man. they really like IPAs. They really like the the micro brews, uh, a lot of the ales, yeah. these sorts of things. Uh, and Sweden's really into that. I didn't know that people actually really liked that style of beer because I'd been to Germany many times before I came to Sweden, and they never drink an IPA yeah. in Germany. I'd never seen that. Germans are really proud lagers, of their probably. beer. Yeah, they have yeah, really lagers, great yeah. lagers, Hefeweizens. Those are my favorite. Yeah, I have my German. I've had my German friend Chris on my main channel a couple of times. Cool, in yeah. One episode we talked about beer. And he's like, almost like a beer snob, but like in a fun way. Yeah. He's like, if you're going to drink a Hefeweizen, you have to drink it out of like the special glass, glass and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, uh, he even like, bought, I miss Chris. he bought yeah. me a glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, now, you left now, it at my house for yeah. like six months. <laughs> I, I remember that. I was like, <laughs> I have a Hefeweizen in the fridge, but I can't drink it because the glass <laughs> is at your house. Like, did you bring a glass? I'm like, nah, bro. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. <laughs> so I, I actually, I just got my glass back a couple yeah. weeks ago and I sent Chris a picture. I was like, hey, look, <laughs> I'm drinking the Hefeweizen you brought me from germany it's still good <laughs> he's like yeah it's because of the glass yeah yeah, yeah but it's, it's uh, the, the different beer cultures are are definitely um interesting uh because something that i found in america was also like you drink to get drunk uh which i'm not saying it's not a thing in sweden because when i was 17 18 years old that was definitely a thing uh as well because you're you're curious right uh but now i'm 25 uh it, it's more like trying to match it with the right kind of foods yeah. um, and obviously going into the wines and, and all that, like what, what to, to drink that to. Whereas a lot of my American friends are like, mm. they think it's too fancy. Like, Oh, what do you mean? What are we going to eat to? We're going to drink to get pissed. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, some of that might have to do with like the, the timing that you were in the U S cause like when Definitely. you were in the U S you were like in the college age, high school age, uh, I would say, like, for me growing up in my family, like, having, uh, like, a, a dad who had both of my grandparents are German on his side, mm -hmm. uh, coming from that culture, we always just kind of, like, drank because we enjoyed the taste of it. And, yeah. And it's the same sort of thing in Germany. Like, pe the beer culture, it's so, like, normal. Like, you could have, like, a, a work lunch and there's people, like, sitting around having a beer for lunch at work. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, one time I even, when I was visiting Chris, he... He offered me a beer for breakfast. And yeah. I was like, dude, it's like 10 in the morning. He's like, so I'm having one. And I'm like, well, I guess I am too. <laughs> well, shit. But it's like they weren't drinking to get drunk. No, they were just drinking because they enjoyed it. And that's yeah. such a different culture. Like, of course, like where I'm from, when I was in college, I went to a big state school. I was in a fraternity. Of course, that's a completely different objective with the yeah, drinking. Yeah, it's, it's all different like scenario, of course. Uh, yeah. but, but it's interesting because like having a beer let's say like a work lunch, it's very rare, uh, at least in my experience, that yeah. someone has, has like a beer, yeah, in Sweden, yeah, yeah. has a beer for, for lunch, it's like, it's, it's almost kind of frowned upon. Yeah, um, the Swedes do really frown upon that like moderate drinking like at the wrong times, so yeah, I feel like, yeah. like in, and that goes a lot into like Swedish culture, I think the Swedish culture is like there's a time and a place for everything, we sort of talked about that with dating and like how people open up, a little bit more in like yeah, the yeah. social situations. It's the exact same with booze. Like if it's Friday or Saturday night, it's like you have complete, like nobody, no, nobody's going to say anything if you just want to get pissed in Sweden if yeah. it's Friday or Saturday night. Yeah, yeah. But if you're like going out and having a, like one beer with dinner on a Tuesday, people are like, what do you mean? You're drinking on a Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like even if you're just having, so you could have like a beer every day mm -hmm. and people would frown upon that. But if you went out and had seven beers on a Friday night, like people, people wouldn't care. People yeah. wouldn't care. Yeah. So I think that goes to show a lot about the Swedish mentality of like, oh, there's sort of like a time and a place. And I, I think like maybe it's a product of me moving to Sweden when I was like 22 and yeah. meeting other 22 year olds. Yeah. But I definitely 
saw sort of that fraternity mindset of like Friday, Saturday night, yeah. let's get a ton of booze. Definitely. Yo, no, out. definitely. And, and that also taps into to, um, where we buy alcohol here because we can't, like the strong, I wouldn't say too strong, like above three and a half percent, I think. Um, you can only buy at a certain store called Sustian Balaget. Mm. Um, Sustian Balaget basically means, uh, Sustian means system. Yeah. And uh, Balaget means company. System company. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, no idea why it's called that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know why I said that, yeah. but <laughs> that's the thing. And, and, and they're open like Monday through uh, Saturday, um, 10 to like 7. And Saturdays are closed at 3. And Sundays are closed. Yeah. And a lot of foreigners, especially me, I, I work uh, within tourism. Uh, and tourists that arrive on like Sundays, like what the heck, like yeah. <laughs> can't get a beer yeah. uh, unless like you go out to bars and everything. And in America, it's it's just like you can go to your convenience store, Seven Eleven, whatever, yeah. and get like a handle of vodka. Yeah. And and um, that is just, I think that makes us when we buy alcohol, we buy more. Yeah. Uh, and sort of planning ahead, like if I'm going to Sustam Balaget on a Friday afternoon. I'm thinking, Packed. shoot, I need to Packed. go there to get my booze for Friday. And then it closes at like two or three on Saturdays. Yeah. So I'm thinking, oh, no, I have to not only buy booze for tonight, but if I want to have a drink on Saturday night, I'm already here. So yeah. I'm buying a lot more booze than Stock up, maybe yeah. I would yeah. uh, if it wasn't that system. But it's interesting, like Swedish people are really supportive of the system belong system. I think yeah. if this same system was in place in the US, yeah. people would hate it. Yeah. People would say, don't tell me when I can buy my alcohol. Exactly. Freedom, man. Let's yeah. go. But the thing is, uh, Stan Belog, it's, it's a really good story in terms of uh, the, the expert help that you most commonly can, can get. Yeah. Um, like the people who work there, first of all, if you're watching this and working there, thank you. You're very polite and yeah. <laughs> very good customer service. In terms service. of a company, I think System Belog is excellent. They do, I mean, yeah, they, they yeah. Great customer service every time I go in there because I, I live really close to one. I always go to the same one. Yeah. They're yeah. super friendly. They, they know me. They're like, hey, how's it going? Yeah. If I ever need anything, I've never actually tried it, but they say if they don't have something in stock, you can actually order. You can. 100%. Whatever you want. Yeah. I've yeah. never tried that, but I no, want to can. try that sometime. I've done that. Yeah. No, yeah, it's definitely a thing because uh, obviously they don't have like everything, but they have a lot. Yeah. They have, they have uh, like a really good, um, what do you call it? Selection. It's, it's selection, yeah, yeah thank yeah. you. But they have a really good selection. Because yeah. it's the only place in Sweden that you can buy booze, they take it upon themselves <laughs> to, to, do that. Yeah. to find anything that you may want. Yeah, It's yeah. state run, by the way. So they're not supposed to profit, which they don't. Uh, everything goes back into the business, uh, which is... Um, I think I think it's good because uh, it's also kind of a Swedish mentality. You shouldn't profit off of uh, alcohol. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that's a bad idea because alcohol is, is a very conservative thing, I feel like. Yeah. If alcohol would be a thing today, like if, if someone would invent alcohol today... Would it be legal? Uh, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> I honestly I mean, if don't you think compare, so. Compare like alcohol and marijuana, for yeah. example. Like, dude, it's so like crazy that we just abstractly choose yeah. that one is legal and one is not yeah. legal. Yeah, and don't forget about be... the prohibition in the 1920s. Like, you know, they tried to prohibit it in America yeah. uh, because they were like, alcohol that's a bad idea. Yeah. Um, Anyways, uh, love alcohol. I'm <laughs> not going to be like a prohibition uh, yeah. sort of guy. But, but uh, it's interesting. And, and I mean, before holidays, like in Sweden, we, we celebrate midsummer, obviously Christmas and all this. Uh, and you go to Sustainable like the day prior. <laughs> yeah. It is jam-packed. Like yeah. people buy, like you see the amounts that people buy. And the thing is, uh, the people who work there, they're allowed to, to deny you. Because uh, first of all, you need to be 20 years old to buy yeah. alcohol there. Uh, you need to be 18 in Sweden to be allowed to drink, but you need to be 20 to actually be allowed to buy it or purchase there. When you're 18, you can go to bars and everything. So it's it's uh, it's kind of it's kind of strange, but that's just the way it works here, and I, I think it's good. Uh, but they are allowed to deny you if you if they think you're buying too much, or if they yeah. they suspect you're buying to some, to a minor, yeah. they could just be like, no, you can't buy this, yeah. and you can't say anything. But one thing that's also interesting <laughs> is. When you're out at a bar, because you can drink at a bar when you're 18, but you don't have to be, you have to be 20 to buy from System Belog, it, the people that run the bar, yeah. they're much more careful about not serving people that look like they've had too much to drink because it kind of falls on the bars. It's sort of the responsibilities of the bars to make sure that people can 
handle their booze. And of course, that's true anywhere, but there's added pressure, I think, in Sweden. Yeah, so yeah. even if you look like the slightest bit like you're having too much fun, for example, like there was a night one time where my brother was in town, yeah. I think, and, and you, had had, you had had <laughs> like maybe two beers. Yeah. But we're, we're all just homies. We're getting along and we were standing in line at this club. It's always the answer, two, and, two beers. <laughs> and I think, I think it was actually. Yeah, no, like, we weren't drunk. We, no, we, we, had, we were nowhere near drunk and yeah. Frederick had his arm around my brother and me, I think. Yeah. Just because we were, you know, pals and we're standing in line, we're hanging, hanging out. out. Yeah. And the the guard would not let you in because he thought you looked too drunk, even though you only had two beers. It yeah. Was, it was and I'm like, like look into my eyes. I'm not drunk. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I drove here. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah. But uh, yeah. It's... I've totally had that situation where I've like looked the guard in the eyes and been like, look, I know what drunk feels like and this is not it. <laughs> not even close, yeah. brother. Yeah. And norm is sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> but it's it's like it must be so challenging for a guard at a bar because yeah. I mean, I've, not to be that guy, but the majority of guards that, that I've met, the absolute majority have been like absolute I don't even like douchebags. Like they've yeah. they've just like really tried to exercise their, their power in a lot of of, of weird ways like to try to like yeah. when you go to a club here in my ex this is my experience when you go to a club and if you're like three dudes you're not gonna get yeah. it it's just not gonna happen uh you have to have like a majority of girls in your company first of all but that's even more of a thing in america yeah probably yeah, yeah. i haven't i haven't really been out that much in america actually. dude in, in america attractive girls don't have to wait in line they just go to the front and they same, get going for free dude same here dude they, but not nearly not, the not, same not, yeah not, not the same way i mean no, not even, that's true that's yeah. true yeah. <laughs> not even close <laughs> it's not even close <laughs> but, but i've yeah. seen bars turn away yeah. groups of really attractive women really which would never happen in america Thing is, uh, some of the of the of the nightclub um, guards or like pub bars, especially on Söder here in, in, in Stockholm, uh, I found to be a lot more more uh, positive and like polite. Yeah. And and it's just like, even though I'm drunk, I'm still like a human being, yeah. <laughs> and we can have a conversation. Yeah. And like I think through having a conversation, it's easier to 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 figure out if I'm too drunk to be in here or not, yeah. just by like. Looking at somebody, just by looking and be like, "There's this expression. It's like, oh, you've a arrow. How many drinks did you have, basically?" Yeah. And and uh, it's just such a condescending uh, first, like it's such a condescending opener. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what you say. It's like yeah. you know you're not gonna get in. So you're like, uh, "I had yeah. 32 beers. What are you gonna do?" <laughs> you know? And and yeah. you can you can just say like, "I've had like two beers," and they're gonna be like, "Yeah, well, I think that you're too drunk." So. Uh, see ya yeah. and, and a lot of times we've been like you know 12 13 people trying to get in and like everyone except for like one this one dude who doesn't get in yeah and it just like just ruins the whole thing yeah, <laughs> just, like, yeah exactly oh, I such a bummer. one night in north shopping i remember i had been out saturday night i think went, went to multiple bars and everything and, and probably should should have stopped drinking so i was walking <laughs> home right yeah. And uh, on my way home, I see another bar, and the people I was with, they wanted to keep drinking. We're like, hey, let's try this one. So we go up to this bar, and uh, and the guard just looks at my ID, and then he looks at me, and he goes, you look like you need a walk. <laughs> <laughs> I said, and I just, I just thought about it, and I was like, actually, I think you're right. I'll see you in 10 minutes. <laughs> really? <laughs> I never came back. <laughs> yeah. Just went home, yeah. yeah. No, and, and a lot of people, they're like, they actually go for a walk for like 15 minutes and come back. They're like, all right, what about now? Yeah. <laughs> they're like, no. It's still no. <laughs> you didn't get the point, right? Yeah. Like, you just go home. Uh, yeah. But, but it, that's, that's um, it, it's, as I said, like, I haven't been out in, in America too much. Uh, I've been to like a few, few bars. And I wouldn't say there's like a huge difference uh, because, I mean, obviously, I've been out in Sweden way more. Uh, but... One thing that I found, I went to like college bars once in Texas uh, when I I went back to like visit, and um, there was this college street. I think it was called the Square or something, mm -hmm. and there was like these four pretty rowdy bars next to each other, and uh, <clears throat> I just tried to get like a nice IPA or something to drink, yeah. and they were like, "No man, you need to get the bomb," and yeah. I'm like. <laughs> All right, you know, being like kind of caught by the peer pressure, like, yeah. all right, I'll have a bomb, you know? <laughs> and I don't even know what I got, but I got like a plastic, everything was slurred in plastic cups. Yeah. And f for me, that was like, it's a college bar, like, w yeah. what am I going to expect? But I would expect like, maybe like a, like Chris in Germany, like a nice glass and like yeah, something yeah. like enjoy the drink. But no, I was getting a bomb in a plastic glass with a straw. Like, yeah. that was it. And, uh, 
It was definitely an, definitely an interesting drink. It was really strong. It was really good. Like it was it was it tasted well, but it was like the college drink. Like if you wanna if you wanna get drunk, man, this is what you drink because yeah. it's cheap and you know it's good. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, yeah. I, I remember a, a similar story when I went to a, a college bar um, one time, and I, it was like my first time in the bar. And I was excited to be there and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, the guys I was I was with, I was asking them. I was like, "Okay, what kind of what kind of drink do I order?" And they mm -hmm. you know, just say AMF. They'll know what to do. Just say AMF. I'm like, okay, well, we'll see what this is. Mm -hmm. So I go to the bar and I'll have an a I'll have an AMF. And uh, he goes, "All right, sir." <laughs> and then all right, all grabs, right, you virgin. <laughs> he grabs about like six different bottles of booze and just pours them all. And I was like, "By the way, what does AMF stand for?" He goes, "Adios, motherfucker." <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I was like. Oh damn! <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Actually, yeah, that was really that good. Was, uh, it was a blue drink too. That had this, like, blue liqueur in there, and uh, I'll never forget that. <laughs> that was a good one. It actually made it taste good somehow. That's why they call it audios because it goes down too fast. Probably. That's yeah, hilarious. I think so. It was it's, it's just it's interesting to compare the the drinking cultures uh, because it, um, although like I've been in a lot of like. Uh, drunken scenarios in the US with like rowdy parties or whatever uh, like I think the peak drunk that not I wouldn't say that I've been but like w with the company that I'm with is like Swedish holidays like yeah. midsummer uh, even like Halloween which is not a big thing that we celebrate here but I think when there's an opportunity to celebrate and drink like New Year's yeah. actually Christmas Day here is a big big day to go out to drink yeah. uh People just get wasted. Like it's, it's people it's, celebrate with their families the twenty fourth. Yeah, and they go out and drink on the 25th. on the twenty fifth and meet up with all the friend, with, yeah. with the friends. Um, and it's um, it's funny how how that's it's a thing because people go to system log it, they gear up, they just drink and um, then they go to the bars yeah. and meet up. And uh, yeah, I, it's not a lot of different scenarios where where you get where you're like I wouldn't say allowed, but where there's like common to get that drunk yeah um my, I don't know. my favorite was when we had the new year's eve party at, at lynn's house yeah yeah yeah. and uh well first of all where where lynn my ex-girlfriend lived there was sort of like a group of girls that lived in that neighborhood and and her next door neighbor would usually throw a super fun new year's eve party but yeah. her parents were having one that year so then the neighbor across the street was going to host uh, and she ended up not being able to and we sort of felt like obligated like oh no we're the last <laughs> person in the friend group on this street that has an offer up house and Lynn's parents were out of town for New Year's so we sort of felt like obligated to throw yeah. this like New Year's Eve party I get which that. turned into so many people because there was already like 30 people on the list. And then Lynn's like, I need to invite my other friends too, since I'm the host now. Yeah. And it just turned into this like mega party plus dinner, plus everything. Oh wow. And, uh, you know, I, th there was even a guy that threw up on the rug and all this stuff. And I, I felt like so awkward when Lynn's parents got home and, you know, obviously they weren't too happy about that. Yeah, and no. he, I think the toilet seat broke and everything. It was like a crazy, it was, crazy, it was party. A it was a crazy party. party. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like the, the boyfriend at the time, like, I'm, I'm so sorry. Like, I, like I, Stefan, <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> I, I felt like so bad. And I didn't understand Swedish at the time. They're like yeah. yelling at Lynn in Swedish. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, no. Like, I, I promise I didn't contribute. I was like, when you're hosting a party like that, it's almost more stressful. It's way more fun. stressful. Yeah. It was fun in the beginning, though, because we had this idea. In yeah. America, we have this thing where you can get iced. Uh, if yeah, you have a yeah. Smirnoff ice, yeah, yeah. basically, That's uh, you have a, a Smirnoff, people will hide them around the house, mm -hmm. and if you accidentally find a Smirnoff ice, like under a pillow somewhere, yeah. or duct tape behind a door or something, you have to get on one knee and chug it. And in America, that's like a bad thing. You don't want to get iced. Yeah. Like, you're like, oh no, I got ice, I have oh, to drink, I have to drink the ice. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in Sweden, um, the first person that found me was like, what's this? And we told him about this concept and he got down on one knee and chugged it and everybody's really into it. And then all the Swedes are going, wait a sec, there's free booze hiding all around the house. 
<laughs> and in America, remember, you never want to find an ice. Yeah, yeah. But as soon as people knew there was free booze at the party, every sweet, oh, I got one over here. Oh, I got one over here. People are running around. Oh, I like, love this the, thing, the man. The entire yeah. thing yeah. just turned into a massive scavenger yeah. hunt. And that was sort of the kickoff. Because in, in America, like I think uh, Smirnoff Ice is perceived uh, as like a sort of a um, a soft drink, I yeah. guess. Like people who, who are not really into alcohol, they drink Smirnoff Ice because it doesn't taste alcohol at all whatsoever, yeah. and it's like what five percent or something like that. Yeah. So, but in Sweden, that's just like it's it's a good drink. We don't really yeah. perceive it as like oh you yeah. you wuss like you drink yeah, Smirnoff Ice. It's like the Ice. same thing as like if you order like a cider in America as a guy, people are like, what are you doing? Uh, what are you doing, dude? Uh, in Sweden, dude, it tastes no good. shame. In yeah, Sweden, yeah. What no do you mean? shame. You yeah, can drink yeah, whatever you want. So yeah. if you're a guy that enjoys cider, cosmopolitans, anything fruity or with yeah. berries in it, yeah. you'll Apple fit right teeny. in. Let's go. You'll fit right in. Yeah, dude. <laughs> no judgment zone yeah. in Sweden. <laughs> Glass is empty. Yeah. Oh, right, next, next one. one. What's the next one? Yeah. America so next? or Sweden? Is it, I think it's America time. America time. It's not a Budweiser. It's not water. Did you show off my fidget spinner bottle opener? I did. Look at this. That trying, is... to, trying to show the mic. Yeah. <laughs> this is... I'm, I'm addicted to, to touching this. Yeah. <laughs> People always love to fidget with my <laughs> bottle opener. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> uh, Sierra Nevada. Yes. Pale Ale. I've seen that one a lot in the it's, US. Uh, I think it's great. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's that much to say. It's popular. Yeah. Sierra Nevada is obviously a place, right? Yeah, in Nevada. Sierra, <laughs> Sierra Nevada. That mountain, makes sense. Nev <laughs> mountain range, I believe. Um, Alrighty. And actually, there's a beer called Brooklyn beer that is really popular here in Scandinavia, but it's not popular at all. Brooklyn in IPAs? Brooklyn IPA, Brooklyn Lager. I don't think it's actually from the U.S., I think it's just called Brooklyn. Yeah, I think it's. I don't remember what what could, should, could we look it up? Yeah, I'll look what it the brewery up. is? I think it might be like a British brewery. Could it? Brooklyn Bro beer. Brooklyn. No, Brooklyn just brewery is. Oh, it says New York. Maybe it is from New York. Well, that would make sense because it's called Brooklyn IPA. Huh. Yeah, there is. But we've never. I've never had that. On I the had West it in Coast. New York a lot, actually. Really? Maybe yeah. it's just big on the East Coast and Europe then for some Cheers. reason. Cheers. So to honor um, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, uh, I would like to share a drinking story. Sure. That has nothing to do with this beer. But um, when I moved to Texas, I was 17 years old, uh, and I turned 18 when I was there. And 18 is the legal uh, drinking age in Sweden. So uh, I started drinking like a little bit at party, house parties and stuff when I was like 16, 17. Underage, I know, sorry. Uh, and... and um, Turning 18 is like kind of a big thing in Sweden, obviously, because you, you can go out to bars or clubs and everything. Uh, but I was in Texas. Uh, so I was going to prove like a couple of friends, like, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm sort of, ex like, I'm 18 now, I'm sort of experienced with yeah, drinking yeah. and all. And they were like, they were a year younger than me. And in, in the US, it's 21, yeah. right? And and um, so they like barely, they barely tried alcohol. Yeah. Um, and I was like, all right, well, uh, we'll hang out tonight. Like, I'll show you. <laughs> Whatever. Like, it was a thing. I was like, <laughs> the blind teaching yeah, yeah. the blind. <laughs> I was like, I'll take you through the experience. Don't worry about it. And uh, <laughs> I, um, I went to my friend's house, uh, and and uh, his parents were out of town. Uh, so I was expecting us. That, like, I, I thought we had bought some some stuff to drink, but he was like, no, we'll we'll uh, we'll steal some from my parents. And I'm like, all right, well. Yeah, and, and like they have everything like in the freezer, uh, but they they drink kind of a lot, so they will see if like a lot is gone. So we should take a little bit of everything. And I'm like, yeah, fine, whatever, like whatever you want, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I know alcohol. <laughs> and uh, so we started to do like small shots of like literally everything. Yeah. And obviously, uh, we just or I just like go nuts because <laughs> I, I wanted to like show the way and and i just took a little bit more than they did or drank yeah. a little bit more than they did and uh, i i had experience of like drinking a few beers like some ciders like getting a, like semi drunk or as you say here salon is yeah. uh but you know mixing a lot of hard liquors i just like <laughs> boom <laughs> and uh next thing i remember uh i like I wake up in like his parents' bed or, bed or whatever, and it's like 7 a.m. And this, my friend, he drives me home, and I just pass out like 
um, in like the hammock at my host parents' house yeah. and just sleep there for like three hours. Uh, and then like coming to practice uh, because we, we were playing soccer together on the Monday they were like Fred like are you okay like are you hung over I'm like what do you mean like yeah, <laughs> I crashed like a baby like, like, <laughs> what do you yeah what do you say like, it was nothing and they yeah. were like dude you were like out <laughs> so what happened was that I I um, it's kind of embarrassing I uh, I, I um, passed out on the couch and it, it's really hot in Texas so yeah. I just didn't wear a shirt and like all of a sudden they just like they hear me go like, <laughs> like <laughs> with my mouth, I <laughs> like, oh shit, he might throw up. So they like, carry me uh, to the porch and I just like, I just like lean over the fence and like, <laughs> oh god. <laughs> and I, I never like, that was the first time I threw up uh, yeah. drunk. Because like, I wasn't experienced with hard liquor. Like yeah. that was just, it was, Dude, it just wasn't a thing. always the hard liquor. Dude, and when you mix it, like to this yeah. day, like you're always going to get messed up when you, when you mix. Yeah. And I didn't know. Yeah. And, and, uh, I was like, I was trashed. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, dude, like you're really experienced with alcohol. Good job. Yeah. Man. And uh, yeah, that was my, dude, that was my first my, and the worst. My first drunk story. So in, in my family, we always had like a one sip rule. Uh, <laughs> so I had like, even when I was younger, I, I was like tasting alcohol. I was sort of comfortable around it. Yeah. Uh, maybe like have a beer or something. So one uh, sip rule, is that like when your parents were drinking, they would let you Yeah, yeah, a like sip any like age, they'd it. be like, yeah, you can taste it. Yeah, like, you're, three, show, you're three now, Stefan. Yeah, there's, <laughs> have a sip, eggnog. <laughs> exactly. I mean, so we were just, you know, that's sort of the German mentality. I mean, there's yeah. families that drink with their German kids, 14, 15, whatever. Yeah. Like it's... It's uh, yeah, in moderation, it's, basically. Yeah, culture, um, yeah. And so the first time I ever got drunk was actually in Germany. I was 16, and that mm. is the legal age mm. in Germany. Uh, and we went to a festival. And they give you these really big, like, liter uh, glasses called a Moss. You get, we remember those from the Oktoberfest. Yeah. You get a liter of beer. So I drank one of those, and, and I was so proud to order it, because I'm like, I'm legal. I can legally yeah. order this. That's it's crazy, because it's 21 in the U.S. and 16 there. That was right. so, so crazy I, for I you. I go up to the guy, and uh, I was proud to show my ID and everything, and, and the guy goes, you're 16, right? And he gives me a wink, and I'm like, yeah, I am 16. <laughs> He's like, don't worry about it. He just <laughs> fills it up. So even had I been underage. Wink? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I'm actually 16, but what do you mean? Whatever, whatever. So moving on. So, uh, so I get back to the table. I'm drinking my my first one, and there was a you know I was 16, and there was this girl who had just graduated high school, but she went on the like exchange trip with mm -hmm. us. So she was like 18, and I thought she was really cute, right? Um, and anyway, so she had like a. Uh, some hard A with her, some 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 vodka with her. Would you call it hard A? Yeah, hard alcohol. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's a thing. Hard A. Yeah. Yeah. So she, she bought some hard A, bro. <laughs> she had some. Yeah, she had, she had some vodka with her, uh, and they were they were doing shots of vodka and stuff. And she goes, "Do you want some?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I want some." <laughs> I'm so 16, like, girl. Yeah, no, of course. Like, I can handle this, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to, you know, be like cool. Like this is my first time, like really drinking, really partying. Yeah. You know? Be like, all right, yeah, I'm pretty cool. So she takes a glass. <laughs> she cool. takes a glass, and and fills it up like a like a drinking glass that you would like drink out of, you know. So there's a well, lot well, of vodka in here, yeah. right? Like, um, you know, all, I don't know how many milliliters. It was a lot. It was like yeah. maybe Not four like or five, that. six shots in there, right? Like, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. a lot. A lot, yeah. And uh, she hands it to me. And I'm going, oh, so uh, got a little challenge on her hands here. Yeah. So I just start chugging it and I down the whole thing. And then she just looks at me like shocked. She was like, that was for the whole table. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so here I am trying to be this cool guy. Like, oh, yeah. And she's like, you dumbass. You are stupid. Uh, and yeah, so... So I was, uh, I didn't really know what it felt like to be drunk before that because I had never been like she, actually drunk. She's like, adios, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I did not throw up that whole night, but like oh, looking man. back, looking yeah. back on that night, I, uh, I was just very happy and I didn't know why. Like I remember when, <laughs> when uh, my, my host family, when my host family's uh, parents came to pick us up. I just remember like professing like, oh my God, you guys are like the best host family ever. Germany is so fun. It's so awesome. I just remember like all this positivity <laughs> going on. And then like waking up the next morning, I was like, 
oh damn that's what you do when you're drunk <laughs> and that's when i learned that i was like oh, i no. love alcohol oh my god <laughs> and i was like looking back they they for sure knew that i was just like super lit yeah of course. i just yeah. didn't even realize it about myself that's hilarious <laughs> Oh, that is. Yeah, so that was my first time ever getting drunk. And it was legal because I was 16 in Germany. <laughs> that, that's, that's great, actually. That, I, I think that's a great first experience, sort of. I mean, not chugging yeah. a full glass of vodka, yeah. but not throwing up and like just getting the happy effect from it. Yeah. And you weren't hungover, right? Because like, yeah. you don't really get hungover when you're that Dude, Every young. time I get, uh, get in trouble with the drinking, it's because I'm chugging vodka to impress girls. <laughs> I had a similar story in college. Every Friday, man. Every time, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, really? Why am I chugging vodka to impress girls? Because it's not that impressive to chug vodka. It's like, if I was an attractive girl, I would have been like, wow, that guy's really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> he is one of the dumbest guys. I don't know. I think it's just... Uh, but but you, you went to college and, and uh, like was, was a, I wouldn't say a frat boy, but you, you were in a fraternity, right? Yeah, I was, yeah. So would you say where you went, I think a lot of our, our Swedish audience would, would wonder like the, the way that um, frat, frats are portrayed and like American yeah. college parties are portrayed in American movies yeah. that we see, it's like just like this, this big like two or three story house with like Greek letters and beer pong and people chugging everywhere and just packed with people. That's exactly what it was. Really? Yeah. 100%. <laughs> 100%. Um, that is pretty cool. Yeah, actually. it is. It is. Re- it, what you see in the movies is like a pretty mm-hmm. accurate depiction. It's like a documentary. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty, uh, wow. I mean, I have a million uh, stories from college, of course, but one of the things actually, our house got in real big trouble in like the 80s, I think. There was like a bunch of uh, hard drugs going through the house and everything, so it got wait, wait, shut. Wait, 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 so your house, like, like would you say? My fraternity Your, your frat house. Yeah. So, so let's just go through this real quick. So the frat house goes through like, could you call it generations? Yeah, exactly. It so people move cycles. in, move out, and just go exactly. through cycles. And there's like a, would say like a, like a frat board of this frat. Exactly. Yeah, so every, yeah, like, exactly. There's president, cool, cool, cool. house manager, vice president of finance, vice president of really? whatever. Wow. Yeah, so there's like eight, nine board members that get reelected every year. Cool. Uh, at the time that I attended, our, our house was really known for, for strong academics. Uh, so we had the cool. top grades every year of all the houses. But we wow. also were really athletic. So we won all the athletic American football competition, <laughs> soccer competitions, everything. So you were just I actually applied for this fraternity because we had a scholarship that would go out every uh, every year, and they would you could win like a thousand dollars if you win this scholarship, basically. That's and awesome. And they send out this scholarship to all the kids that are going to attend that school that have above a certain grade point average, so that yeah, are, yeah. are really smart in school. And uh, the other criteria to win the money is what your your athletic accomplishments. Cool, cool. And, and they were really impressed with mine because I did a special program where I had my first two years of college done before I even went to college. That's I did that while awesome. I was in high school. Yeah. And then I was like captain of the soccer team, all state soccer player. He uh, was just so like... that in combination with like that in combination with my academic achievements, I actually finished second and won seven hundred fifty dollars. Really? Of, out of one hundred and thirty applicants. Wow. Something. So Look at you I, now. I discovered this fraternity through actually this, this scholarship process. And then they had some events. I hung out with the guys. I thought, wow, these guys are really driven. They're athletic. They're, they're cool. You're like, are these uh, frat boys? <laughs> and actually, it, as it turned out, I had been, when I signed up for the dorms, I got like a random roommate. Mm-hmm. And the roommate, I tried to get a hold of him. He was from this small town in like Montana or something. And the population of the town in Montana was like 49 people. It was like way <laughs> up by the Canadian And they're border. all married to each other? I, I tried, yeah, I tried to send him some messages on Facebook like, yo, you're going to be my roommate. Like, 49. let's get to know each other. I didn't get any response from this dude. I'm like, do they even have internet up there? <laughs> I was like, yeah, so I was like, damn, I'm going to be like with this guy every day in the same room and I can't even like get a response on Facebook. I was like, I I just, I wasn't really like so sure about the situation. And then when I started to meet these guys in the summer, they do like summer recruiting events. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they offered me to join the fraternity, I was like, if I accept right now, can I like live in the house with you guys? Because you guys are cool. And, uh, and like, the Montana guys doesn't even roll. Yeah, I don't right. even yeah, know yeah. who this guy is. It, uh, and they were basically like, yeah, we've got two spots open in the house, oh, actually. Wow, look at that. So we're going to offer two spots to freshmen coming in. Tick. And so if you sign with us right now, 
which is sort of a disadvantage because you don't get to see all the other houses like when you come to the university and tour them all during one week and then make your decision then. Cool. But I was like, man, you guys are cool. You're the top grades, super athletic. I was like, these are my people. Yeah. So I was like, I signed. I identify with you. And mm-hmm. I lived in the house as a freshman. That's so awesome. I foregoed my uh, opportunity to live in the dorms and lived in the house right away. Oh, wow. Um, and it was interesting because... A long time ago, the house was, they were really into hard drugs and everything. Like mm-hmm. in the, I don't know when it was, 90s, 80s, something, a long Whatever time ago. Whatever drugs were in, yeah. Uh, so the fraternity got shut down for several years by the university. And then when they got reinstated by the university, yeah. they had to agree to be a dry house, to so not have alcohol on the premises. So actually, there was like five or six fraternities that had gone through similar processes mm-hmm. that were dry there was one house that was not recognized by the university but they had like really wealthy like donors that were like members of that one so they just financially support them anyway so yeah. they were kind of like the real bad boys that like anything goes at this house <laughs> yeah. kind of scared walking by their house and like what kind of drugs are they doing in there you know like sort of crazy um and there's like a little rivalry between all the houses but because our house was a, a dry house we took yeah. that pretty seriously so oh, people, so would, people right. would go out and, and drink in their cars before going to parties or where we would throw all of our major events is the seniors, the oldest members, they wouldn't live in the house anymore. We had like 60 guys living in our house. 60. 60, but there was 120 in the entire fraternity. So usually so it's like 30, 30 first year freshmen yeah. that would live in the dorms. Yeah. Then it's like 60 guys, the, the second and third years were living in the house. And then yeah. usually in your final year, you live... Uh, outside the house but most people in that position they would be uh, renting out like a property really really close by and so there'd be these massive houses with like six or seven guys living there that were all the oldest members in the fraternities and that's where we would throw all of our parties because in each one had a nickname we had fat bastard we had g spot zoo and the spot those were the four like big ones i think oh Oh, and there was 40 ounce too we had 40 40 ounce ounce, and so we would throw parties at these houses (laughs) basically and there was and sometimes we would team up with the live out houses from other fraternities and Mm -hmm. throw like events with multiple fraternities together and there was one event there was like a block of like four major houses we owned two of the houses Mm -hmm. and two other fraternities owned two other ones so it was like 350 guys inviting all these girls over and all their friends and everything and then we tarped off the block of four houses and we had over 5,000 people at this party which which we had to break up into two smaller parties because the tarp was actually cutting off the driveway yeah, yeah, that yeah. was going between and the, the police said no you can't cut off this uh, yeah. driveway people, need to, drive there, yeah, people yeah. need to drive through and it was I don't know, we're like a driveway but okay yeah. so Whatever. we opened it up yeah uh, but but then it was still like two parties with like two thousand people Jesus. at each party and oh, wow. it just absolutely uh, in- incredible it's insane actually that um, just sounds insane but but wait this is this is re- rewind a little bit uh, so you had you had a dry house so you wouldn't yeah. be you wouldn't be allowed to, like drink a beer inside basically no, no. and if if, they, if you would have been caught you would you, you would have gotten like a warning or something exactly and they like would, would it be in their interest to let go of that band like eventually because you were like the top athletic top grades yeah well i think one of the, that's actually one of the like plus factors for the yeah. house because some of the fraternities it's just really dirty when you yeah. go in there. Yeah, yeah. And like, I'm a pretty like clean, organized guy. And I think anytime you have 60 guys living in a house, it's not going to be the most clean. No. But we sort of prided ourselves on like keeping it somewhat nice. Dude, and 60 guys. Like, was it was it like two kitchens? It was one massive kitchen. Wow. And you'd have kitchen duty once a week, and you would help the the chef cook the meal. Basically. Oh yeah, you have a sh- you had a chef as well. We had a we had a chef that lived there. Uh, and we had a, 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 a imagine, house manager that lived there for a time. that job, like, yeah, I want to I become a chef, yeah, in a fraternity house. <laughs> so you just cook all your meals? Yeah, or it what? was Brenda. Brenda was great. She made amazing food. Uh, yeah. So she made you dinner every night? Yeah, yeah. Wow. She lived across the border in Idaho. She'd come over every morning. She'd cook all day for us. And uh, Wow. Yeah. And, then the week- and that was, like, included in your rent or whatever. Exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. Dude, that's just yeah. a life. Yeah, it was, it was really fun. And the dry house was definitely... Nice, because the environment you, was pretty nice. Mm-hmm. And what would happen is everybody would sleep in this giant room full of bunk beds. So oh. it's not like... So, oh. so I would always have roommates, but there'd be like three or four guys living in a room. 
And some people would like sleep on a pull-out couch in their room or they would move a bed into their room. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and all the rooms are different sizes depending on how long you live there. You get different priority on the good rooms and the bad rooms oh, and all wow. this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's really amazing. It's sort of like a, a, a mini company. You know? Yeah, like no, it really is. All no, because I think, I think the Swedish perception of like a frat is like yeah. what I said, like college movies, huge parties, yeah. like not a lot of responsibility, yeah. just get drunk, get laid, do all these things. Yeah. But I mean, the way you're, you're explaining it now, it's, it's sort of like like a an organized big club to like feel more involved in the university and get like automatic friends or whatever and yeah. just feel affiliated to something yeah. which it's is an entire pretty subculture. awesome yeah. yeah i would not have had the same like super fun college experience had i yeah. not been in the greek yeah. life yeah uh i mean greek, greek life is definitely the way to go and that was one of the reasons why i wanted to go to the school that i did because yeah. they had a really active greek system yeah so and, greek system that would be the, the the frats and the sororities yeah which are all like sort of close to the uh to the campus but then there's like a lot of just normal students that yeah. attend the, co- yeah. <laughs> attend the college yeah. that would live like in apartments like further away yeah and we used to call it like apartment land and like you never go out there you know like yeah. apartment land like that's and, <laughs> then, the we, goes there, and yeah. then we would call it like uh if you weren't in the greek system we'd call you a gdi like a goddamned independent <laughs> 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 I know, the fuck yeah. GDI. Yeah. So there's just all sorts of like acronyms and things, and every house had a That's different awesome. reputation. Wait, we wait, wait. Of... So I gotta, ask, I gotta ask. Yeah. If you, if you all slept in like huge sleeping rooms with bunk yeah. beds, obviously as a college guy, you want to get laid. Dude, what you, would you do? Dude, everybody has a different way of doing it. <laughs> you know, like car, <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> Her house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That was the perk of going out with the freshman girls. They had a dorm to themselves. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they had a dorm. Yeah. But you just skipped that. Wait, so so you were a, a junior than senior. Were, were those yeah, your skips? Yeah, exactly. So, so did you I ever spent move out? one. I spent one year living in the house, and I I had to get like special permission to move out early, and then I did my final year living in a live out house. So then I was in the situation where all the younger guys were coming to my house to party. <laughs> follow my rules, man. You're in my house. I live at the G spot. Yeah, no, I live at the Welcome. zoo. I lived at the at zoo. The zoo yeah. yeah, there was well, eight, uh, seven or eight of us that lived at the zoo. Uh, and yeah, it was a oh, really, cool. really fun. But wow. yeah, every every fraternity has their own sort of reputation. And wow. we kind of had the try hard reputation because people right. would hate on us. Because I mean, yeah. top grades and we would win all the athletic yeah, competitions. Yeah. I would hate you guys. And like a lot of people yeah. were like, trying to hate on it oh you like you try hard like you're not supposed to try (laughs) easy for you to say when you lose (laughs) so not cool though future man yeah i just don't care no but honestly like a lot of the people in my fraternity because we were like so strong academically they're all like doctors and lawyers and dentists now and i'm like i'm just a lowly youtuber yeah (laughs) you're just like well i'm bailing yeah (laughs) going to sweden no but i I think that's that's like it, it sounds like the perfect mix of having like this automatic brotherhood, whatever. Uh, the one thing I think would be problematic in Sweden is that frats is for guys, sororities is for girls. Mm. Like in Sweden, they would want a co-ed. Def, one hundred percent. Like that would like, never it. work. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's so interesting because for us, it'd be like, yo, you have to find your own like. Or in America, it's like you have to find your own pack of guys that yeah, yeah. you know they're your brothers. Yeah. And like in Sweden nowadays, would be like that's so stupid. Like yeah. I love the idea. Like I I don't love the idea of just being dudes and just being girls. Like that's whatever. That's yeah. a that's a byproduct of it. But I love the whole yeah. system, the idea of of, of a fraternity or a sorority. Yeah. But that's just something that just. It's tradition and nobody questions it. Yeah. But if that was a huge thing here, people would definitely question it. But Swedish colleges have their own traditions. I remember when Lynn was in North Shoping, every college they had, like, depending on your major, because mm-hmm. they use the cohort model. The what? The cohort model. So, mm-hmm. like, in college in America, mm-hmm. you have, like, 500 people in a lecture hall a lot of times. And then you go to your next class, and then you have 500 different people or 80 different people, whatever the class size is. Mm-hmm. And so you don't have classes with the same people all the time. But yeah, as a yeah. cohort in Sweden, you have like 50 or 60 people in your cohort yeah. and you have all of your classes with them. Yeah, and yeah. then they tend to get like super involved with the people that are so in So that's classes. like a smaller... Exactly. Not fraternity or sorority, but like a club. Exactly. Your class. And, and then they yeah. have different traditions and everything based on like the type of thing you're studying. Like they wear these like 
overall pants. You've yeah. probably seen them. Yeah, uh, they're, yeah, I mean, they're really not. <laughs> they're really not, not that fancy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's a thing. Yeah. But it is a thing, and they're proud of it. And you, you get like patches if you like accomplish certain things, and they sew patches on. And the thing is, like the first time they get their pants, mm-hmm. they're like bright green overalls. Is what Lynn got. You're supposed yeah. to like roll around in the mud and do all this like sort of like initiation sort yeah, of rituals. Yeah. And, them, uh, like, and then you're not supposed to use. wash the pants ever. And I was going, Lynn, we live here together. Like, you better wash these things. <laughs> they smell awful. I mean, people were throwing food at her. Yeah. It's like food residue in there. That's, that's just a weird thing. thing. Yeah, I was like, yeah. oh, you got to wash the pants. I'm like, tell him your boyfriend said that. <laughs> you're gonna tell him your boyfriend <laughs> grabbed the pants <laughs> and washed them behind the back. <laughs> tell him your boyfriend just set demands, yeah, you know? Exactly. I pay the rent. <laughs> I pay half, right? I pay half the rent. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, my, uh, my girlfriend, she goes to Uppsala University and uh, she's not in any like she now in corona like there's just distance right you yeah. just have all online classes and all that and um but i i know I'm, i don't really know how they work but they have nations there it's called nations yeah. sort of like clubs or whatever and it's divided in like the stockholm nation the gothenburg nation i don't even know dude like i've never uh i, have, I haven't been in one of like i know that they like the stockholm nation can host parties like we're mm-hmm. going to the stockholm nation party or whatever yeah. um so that's like that's a thing, but I don't know too much about it. So if anyone is watching this is like in a nation or whatever, please put it in the comments. Yeah, uh, it'd be interesting to see how that works and how similar that is to because fraternities and sororities are really cool things. Like I toured, uh, I think it was A and M University and uh, mm, they're in, big into that. Yeah, yeah. in College Station. Yeah, and we would go through this like sorority street, and the ho- there's like mansions. They're really cool. These houses really are. Cool huge yeah. like it's, it's it's and it's like this big pillars uh, and really cool architecture and i'm like wow this is yeah. this is just They're beautiful houses. yeah yeah it's awesome yeah. and you're like wow but but something i also went to um uh texas state uh to 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 a friend there and they have like he was living in in a frat house it wasn't as big it was like it was like a like a village of sororities and frats yeah. and uh so there was like five or six different streets and these big houses everywhere and it was like <clears throat> let's say five or six miles ish from like the main street like the square where all the bars were which uh like to me was like okay so is there like uh, is, is, is there buses? Is there a train? Like, how do you get there? And they're yeah. like, no, we drive. And I'm like, wait, this is a frat. Like, you guys drink. That's all you do. Like, yeah. <laughs> so it sort of promoted, like, yeah, we're going to party yeah. and someone's going to be the DD and he, like, the, de- the designated driver. Yeah. And he only drinks eight beers, you know? And, yeah. and this only <laughs> eight beers. Dude, like, that was like a thing. Like, yeah. like drunk driving, yeah. it was like so accepted there. And not, it's not like, yeah, don't be wasted. And, like, don't be yeah, stupid. It's still like, frowned upon, but it's like, but they, not nearly in the same way. But to, to, to them, it was like, how else are we going to like solve yeah. it? Uber? Yeah, we Uber sometimes, but like, we're not that rich yet. Like, yeah. we can't, we can't do that. And dude, I'm never going to forget this one guy. He was like, super friendly guy. Really great, yeah. great dude. And, um, we were like we were partying or whatever, um, but but we were like maybe two or three beers deep. It was in the beginning yeah. uh, of the night, and we were gonna go get like pizzas for dinner. And uh, we walk out to to his uh, car, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm good to drive. No worries." I'm like, "All right, fine," because um, we were drinking like Bud Lights or Budweiser, yeah, yeah, so I was yeah. like, "This is water." <laughs> and we come out to, to his car, and like his his uh, his left side mirror. And the mirror up here, the what's called yeah, the, the, the mirror in the middle. <laughs> yeah, the mirror, the, the mirror in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Two of the mirrors were like broken. They were like like the mirror in the middle was like hanging down, yeah. and like the one on the left side was like it was just off. Like the whole thing was just broken. And I'm like, dude, what happened to your car? Like, what have you done? And he's like, yeah, dude, it was like, <laughs> yeah, it's funny. So like a week ago, like I was, I was a few beers deep, and you know, yeah. <laughs> I drove down, like, I almost crashed, and I'm like, dude, like, this is pretty serious. Like, yeah. you would drink driving, and you crash. He's like, yeah, I don't know, man, it was stupid. And I'm like, here you are, driving again. Yeah. Three, like, your car is, bro, you don't even have, like, a mirror. Like, how are you going <laughs> to, how is this a thing? Like, no one is saying anything. Yeah. And I was just like, I felt forced to just go with it. Like, yeah, because... We went and got the pizzas, and then, like, I saw him drive later that night, and I'm like, Jesus, this is just... It's crazy. It's and just like a, Sweden, t- a bomb. Sweden is so the opposite. Like people will have one beer, 
You're like, I'm not driving tonight. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it's respect to be like, better safe than sorry. I think more people should have that mindset because drinking and driving is a serious thing. But like, there was one time where like, I, I needed to take a bus to get home and the bus came early, so I missed it. Yeah. You know, and then I was, you know, saying to somebody, hey, could you like drive me to the train station? And like, oh, but I had a beer a couple hours ago. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but like, in America, I was like, <clears throat> in America, it's like, I've, I've had three or four drinks and, and driven and, and I knew I was like totally in yeah, control. Yeah, and yeah. it's like a totally different mindset here in Sweden. Like, yeah, yeah. you would never be like, yeah, I only had three or four beers. Like, I'm fine to drive. People would look at you like, what do you mean? Like, yeah, that's terrible. Don't, yeah. You should not do that. Yeah, yeah. So, completely different mindset around it. And I think I've probably come a little bit more towards the Swedish side of better yeah. be safe than sorry. So the thing is, like, if you have one beer, I mean, my mindset now is, like, if you have one beer at dinner, then yes, drive your friend to the train station at 9 o'clock, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I really think that the mindset of, like, I, either I drink and I don't drive yeah. or I, I don't drink yeah. and I drive. And I think like you know? going in with those like expectations. Like, yeah. Cause this I think... person had the mindset of like, Oh, I'm not going to drive tonight. Yeah. So I will have a drink. Yeah. I don't think it was like that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You might as well as get wasted if you're not driving. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. the thing is, uh, on that note, we're moving on. Yeah. One more Swedish one from Dalarna, right? Yeah. Oppe uh, which is a brewery. If you have not tried it, uh, you definitely should. Yeah. Hope you uh, sponsor us, please. Really good, uh, really good beers. You can get a beer to sponsor the podcast? Dude, that would just be... Monday that, night. That's like, that's the one goal of this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Monday night beers with Stefan and Fred. <laughs> <laughs> Rename, rebrand. Hope you got Dala Lager. Dala is short for Dalarna, which is mm-hmm. a place in the middle of Sweden. So, we're going to do this. Oh, I just couldn't do it. Yeah, so dude. awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't even know what kind of beer this is. Ecologist. Yeah, it, I mean... It's, Ecological. It's, what do we say in America? We say guess, organic. It's a, <laughs> organic beer. People put organic on everything. Dude. Organic. I just think half things is just like a brand. Like, yeah. I wouldn't say... You know organic. what's funny? Uh, this this uh, this guy that invaded the capital with uh, with the fur bikini and the the Viking horns. You yes, I heard this. This he, is crazy. He was in in jail and he refused to eat the food because Curious. it was not organic. And <laughs> I heard, yeah, yeah, I did hear that. And I heard that he. Uh, mm, mm, it's good beer. Mm. I heard that he um, he got it. He got organic food. I heard he got it, yeah. I, yeah. I heard they were investigating it. Yeah. Well, investigating I just, it. I just made a video on my channel talking about how much worse the American prisons are than the Swedish ones. Yeah, and they got him organic food. That's yeah. crazy. So American prisons, not so bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, for organic food, recommend. Care of. Yeah. And this, cra- this, uh, this, this crazy story <laughs> from the Capitol riots. There's like this this uh, this picture uh, of one of like one of the rowdiest guys who was like standing upon like a statue or something. And um, there's like it's, it's a it's a photo of the, of the crowd, yeah. and you see this guy standing up above the crowd, and he's wearing a scarf, and you don't really notice what kind of scarf it is, unless you zoom in on it, and it's like is this hockey team in Södertälje, which is <laughs> like yeah, which is like seventy kilometers south of Sweden. It's like Stockholm, a, yeah, so, oh, sorry, yeah. of, uh, of Stockholm, really small town, yeah. semi good hockey team. It's like their special collection scarf. They gave out like thousand of them like ten years ago. It's and, like and now he's riding and for it's, Trump. <laughs> and, it's, and, and no one knows who this guy is. Only that he's wearing this scarf, and yeah. they're looking for him because they want to prosecute him, right? Yeah. And uh, it was it was on on the morning news like a week ago. It is hilarious. That's crazy. It's just, this scarf yeah. is in the middle of the riots. Well, I was having a big debate about this with uh, this person I, I'm, I'm seeing. We talked about it yesterday, mm-hmm. and she was going well. Uh, it's crazy to me that over 70 million people voted for Trump. She's yeah. like, in Sweden, we. she said it in like, we have crazy people in Sweden, but not that many. Yeah. But then I was sort of coming from a mindset of like, look, like these people that are supporting Trump, you have to like, if you try to step into their shoes, like the media that they consume, mm-hmm. it's like completely like... They're told on their news channels, the people that they follow, like everything that they're involved in. Yeah, yeah. It's like they literally believe that the election was actually stolen. Yeah. And if you were in a position where everybody you follow, all the news that you hear, even the president of the United States himself saying that, saying that the election was a fraud, that it was stolen, and you truly believe that, like yeah. you can understand why people would 
lash out because they think that they're trying to stand up for democracy. And yeah. and I yeah. think about like our perspective. Like I watch completely different news channels, but I try to watch both <laughs> sides because yeah. I don't want to be biased. Yeah. I really want to try to see yeah. where these people are coming from. Yeah. And I, I think like if you were in their position, I mean, we just chalk it up as, oh, they're uneducated, they're they're stupid or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But like if you really try to put yourself in that other person's shoes, mm-hmm. like you could see why they would maybe act the way you did, even though I don't condone that at all. I think it's terrible and I think yeah. it's tragic what it's, happened. It's but. crazy. The whole thing's crazy. But I mean, I, I definitely get that as well. Like that, the fact that you can get, um, uh, that, that you can actually believe it. Because yeah. again, like one of the big proponents for the, the election actually being stolen, uh, except for Trump, obviously, yeah. Rudy Giuliani. Rudy Gi- Giuliani is like a lawyer. And he was, he was uh, I think was a mayor of New York or something during 9-11 and was like a true American hero during 9-11 because yeah. he was like really leading them through the crisis and all yeah. that. Um, and I, I 100% believe that people, um, they believe and can find in what he's saying. Yeah. And the fact that he is saying that it was stolen, we have evidence that this is shady and you want to believe it, then you're going to go ahead and believe it. Yeah. But then again... I think 70 million people uh, do not think the election was stolen. Yeah. Like, I think exactly. more than half of that didn't really I mean, vote for Trump. They I voted know, for Republicans. Exactly. You know? I know Republican friends of mine that they they don't want higher taxes. They're business owners and they're, look, if Biden they don't really elected, care, we're going yeah. ha- to pay higher taxes, all right? Like, mm. I'm going to support the guy that's going to keep our taxes low and, and support policies that I am more philosophically aligned with. And I completely yeah. understand that. Like, yeah. I don't like taxes either. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I Who think, does? But but I always try to, to see both sides, and that's why I hate politics. Is because we get so divided as a nation, dude. Especially uh, America. Especially right now. I think it's insane. And seeing you know, I was not real educated on what happened with the Capitol riots, but just last night I watched all the clips yeah. of what was going on, and you know, it made me sort of embarrassed to be yeah. an American in a way that that we would resort to violence or at this many people would believe that the election was stolen, where to me it seemed like a complete, like, that everything, like, checked out from the sources that I was reading. That, yeah. that you know, there was no widespread uh, voter fraud or these sorts of things. And, it's just a- but I think both sides do it. That's why it's terrible. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, when, when Trump got elected, the Democrats tried to blame it on Russia. And, oh, there was collusion with Russia. And, yeah, a lot you of know, stuff, yeah. And, and it's always something. Yeah. You know, the side that doesn't win is going to try to exhaust every avenue possible yeah. to make the other side illegitimate. Yeah. And I think that's terrible yeah. that both sides do it. I mean, we went to every length possible. They, they couldn't find any connection with Russia. Yeah. No, no one could believe that Trump won. Yeah. Like, no one could believe it. And, and everyone was like, some, there must be something shady going yeah. on with this yeah. and it the, the whole thing is uh, i definitely agree with you yeah. with with the fact that it's it's tragic how how the judges make the other side seem illegitimate um mm-hmm. but i i don't know like to me it's crazy how it's like always 51 to 49 percent yeah so often we are so divided it's, it's crazy like, like it's it's how is that even possible yeah. like how is how is it that that much yeah. it's just uh to to me it's it's uh, one aspect of it is, is that it's like it's great that you know there's yeah. so many strong opinions but you know the, the way the, the the level of polarization the last years in america yeah. it's just like going from obama to trump yeah what is that you yeah. know that is you gotta watch, what is that saying you gotta watch the social dilemma have you seen yeah, the social I dilemma it, I it, yeah. that is a documentary on facebook it really explains like how a country <laughs> can get netflix, so divided yeah. it's on netflix yeah. Right. on netflix yeah yeah you cambridge it, it explain, analytica yeah, it explains why people how we get so divided because if you believe certain things you like certain posts you follow certain creators mm-hmm. these social media platforms keep recommending you more and more of that content and you start to be in this bubble of only hearing and seeing things inside of your bubble and so one of the things that i always try to do is see things outside of my bubble not just the things that youtube recommends to me sometimes i'll intentionally turn on a broadcast from somebody who i know opinion i may not agree with just because i want to see where they're coming from and i think that's going to lead to a better debate so my challenge is to anyone on either side, I don't mm. want to get you know political or anything, but like try to see it 
from the other side and, and don't be quick to name call or condemn like yeah, i think yeah. if you're an american like we're all americans mm -hmm. and we need to you know work together to make mm -hmm. the country better and and even though if you were a trump supporter and and he lost like you still want biden to be successful yeah. because he is going to be our president when trump was our president i wanted him to be successful yeah. i didn't necessarily agree with everything he did and he said and i thought a lot of the things were Unpresidential that he did, but, but it's just, it's just never going to be that. Succeed. It's never going to be the scenario that that you're you're happy with everything the the president does or, or the person in power does. But it is as you say, like it's it's in everybody's interest that the person in charge is successful. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's just amazing. <clears throat> Something that I've learned uh, from just solely from living in Texas, New York, and Stockholm, uh, and and going in a lot of different schools or whatnot. It's like you're never gonna win an argument if you go in to a discussion or whatever and you're not prepared to change your opinion. Because yeah. if I have a really strong opinion about something uh, and I'm not open to what the other side have to say or can't really hear what they're saying, I don't even want to. I don't even want to discuss with people that are not prepared to understand and maybe even agree with me. Yeah. Because if you can't hear me out, you're gonna notice really quick. Like if, yeah. if if I listen to someone and they're not really based in facts, where it's like, yeah, well, my uncle said this and that. It's like, all right, whatever. Thank you. Yeah. See ya. Peace. Uh, but but I think that that should be everybody's mindset to go into. If you're ever gonna go into a discussion about politics, healthcare, money, finance, whatever, yeah. be prepared to change your mindset because as convinced as you are of whatever you're thinking, the other person might be as convinced of the opposite. Yeah. And you need to understand why. And yeah. obviously, culture, where you grew up, your parents, political affiliation, yeah. if you watch Fox News or CNN, all this is going to play a yeah. role. And, and I think that's why I always click with people the best that like to travel. Because when you travel, it really <laughs> opens up your eyes. It all, There's it's more automatic, than one yeah. way to do things. You yeah. know, the... There's things that work in Sweden really well that, that people, you know, really dislike in American politics. And yeah. I'm like, well, Sweden's found a way to make it work, so it's not impossible. Yeah. Uh, and that's one of the really, really interesting things about me uh, going through and traveling to different countries and stuff. Yeah. But this could be a completely different episode for different yeah, time. Yeah, so yeah. if you want to see us get way deeper in we politics... Shouldn't, we shouldn't, buy, we shouldn't uh, take off everything. Up yeah, this, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. so, yeah, we can definitely do another. But next week's podcast is going to be with my mom i think yes she's coming to sweden Steph's mom's coming man yeah so perfect I, the first guest on our podcast <laughs> yeah my mom. it's gonna be yeah. a, so tune in for that yeah. now, guys seriously thank you so much for for tuning in for watching for the feedback um we we spoke about comments uh last episode and and i feel like i've been a bit more polarized to comments somebody hated my shirt yeah. I wore it one time. It's gone now. <laughs> I'm not wearing grandma's shirt again. Yeah. Uh, Somebody said I didn't look American enough because you were the one with the Apple Watch. So I put my Apple Watch yeah. on just for this episode. And are my hands really that small? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but but I, we just we just love the feedback. It's great yeah. to just read comments and, and whatever opinion you, you might have. It's very welcome. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's, it's just yeah. great to, 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 to discuss and see what you guys think. Yeah. Thanks for watching. So subscribe so we can see you next week. Cheerios. All right. Mm.